The quality of recording like a music CD is only as good as the microphone used to make it. That's why top recording studios and artists rely on ribbon microphones like this. It gets its name from a small ribbon inside the mic that vibrates within a magnetic field to turn sound waves into electric signals that can be amplified and recorded. But how exactly do a few magnets in a ribbon come together to make pitch perfect sound? The inner workings of a ribbon mic are so delicate, making a microphone starts with cutting hollow steel tubing into nine inch pieces so they can be machined into a strong protective microphone casing for the magnets and ribbons inside. Once the steel casings are cut to size, a metal lathe bevels the edges so a top cap and bottom connector can be screwed on when the microphone is assembled later on. But first, the steel tubes are dunked in a tank of cool water. It's not to clean them, it's to cut 24 slots into the casings so sound waves can travel through the steel to the ribbon inside. The slots are cut by an electrically charged brass wire that never actually touches the steel. Instead, it shoots 150 volts of electricity through the water towards the casings. The charge is enough to burn the slots into the steel without leaving any burrs or sharp edges to be smoothed away. When all 24 slots are cut, the mic cases are polished with a blast of tiny glass beads. While the casings are being blasted, a worker mills a steel block into the part of the microphone that holds the ribbon and the magnets inside. It's called a transducer. Its job is to convert sound waves into electric signals a recording device or amplifier can understand. Here's how it works. The ribbon that gives the microphone its name is mounted in the transducer between two magnets. As sound waves come into the microphone, they hit the ribbon causing it to vibrate. The vibrations disrupt the electromagnetic field between the two magnets. And that disruption converts the sound waves into electric energy. The magnets used in the transducer are so powerful, they're known as super magnets. They're made from iron and a naturally occurring element called neodymium, the most powerful magnetic element on Earth. The pull between two super magnets is powerful enough to work through a human hand. They're used in the microphone because they can pull more energy out of the ribbon to produce a truer, more detailed sound. The ribbons are made from sheets of pure aluminum that are so thin, it would take 50 sheets stacked one on top of the other to equal the thickness of a single human hair. Just the slightest touch can turn the aluminum sheets into powder. But that sensitivity is why the ribbons are able to pick up the slightest nuances in sound. To make a ribbon, an engineer uses a razor blade to cut out a strip of the aluminum that's four inches long and just a fraction of an inch wide. The material is far too fragile to be measured. So instead, the ribbons are weighed to be sure the dimensions are right. If the weight checks out, the ribbons are carefully fed between two rotating gears in a crimping machine to gently crimp a corrugated pattern into the aluminum. Corrugating makes the ribbon stronger without adding any weight or thickness. The grooves also affect the way the ribbon vibrates to create a richer tone. The gentle pressure applied by the crimper tightens up the aluminum strip. To be sure it won't stretch out once it's in the microphone, the tiny ribbon has to be stretched ever so carefully by hand to relax it after the trauma of the gears. The riskiest part comes next, mounting the fragile ribbon between the two magnets inside the transducer. The ribbon is placed into the slot and screwed down with two brass clamps. The brass not only holds the ribbon in place, it also conducts electricity through the ribbon to move the sound signals through the microphone. Before the screws are tightened completely, the ribbon has to be tuned to reduce noise made by the molecules in the aluminum that could distort the sound quality of the mic. It's such a dicey process 
about 30% of the carefully corrugated ribbons are torn as they're installed in tune and have to be thrown out. The ribbons that make it into the transducers intact are covered with stainless steel screens to protect them from dust and dirt. Then, the transducer can be wired for sound. A small transformer is soldered to the brass clamp at the base of the transducer. It amplifies the electric signals, so they can be heard as they come out of the microphone. Once the transformer is in place, it's time to assemble the microphone. To start, a worker adds a windscreen to the inside of the protective steel casing. The screens will protect the delicate ribbon when it's inside the microphone from the pressure of wind and loud noises that could cause the ribbon to tear. When the screens are in place, the combined transistor and transducer, which hold the ribbon and the two magnets, slide into two long slots along the side of the casing. A little cotton is wedged inside the case to prevent the wires on the transformer from rattling around inside the mic. The top cap and bottom connector are snapped into place. And this microphone is ready to capture any musical or vocal performance without any distortion or loss in the quality of the sound.